your uh, cell phones? And yes, we are Terry. <laughs> Two. We, we are Terry. <laughs> This is Franciscan Media's Saint of the Day for May 9th. Today we celebrate St. John of Avalon, born in 1500 in the Castile region of Spain. Age 14, John was sent to the University of Salamanca to study law. Later he studied philosophy and theology in Alcala before his ordination as a diocesan priest. As his parents sold heir, John received a considerable fortune upon their deaths, which he immediately distributed to the poor. John traveled to Seville, hoping to become a missionary to Mexico. However, Seville's archbishop persuaded John to remain and minister to the abbots of Andalusia. For the next nine years, John earned a reputation as an engaging preacher, a perceptive spiritual director, and a wise confessor. Not afraid to denounce vice in high places, John was investigated by the Inquisition, but later cleared. He counted among his friends such saints as Francis Ford, Ignatius Loyola, John of God, John of the Cross, Peter of Alcatara, and Teresa of Adam. John worked closely with the Society of Jesus, helping it grow both in Spain and in the Spanish colonies. John of Avila died in 1569, but was canonized in 1970, and named a doctor of the church in 2012. His mystical writings have been translated into several languages. There's more about the saints along the inspiration and cap resources at our website, saintoftheday.org. From Francis Media, this has been Saint of the Day. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. We gather here on what usually is the Feast of the Assumption, which was moved to Sunday. Ascension. Ascension, excuse me. Assumption, that's me. Um, well, let's take a moment to see God's peace and receive.
Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the sick, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You raise the dead to new life, Christ, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made your people partakers in your redemption, grant, we pray, that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them because, and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he entered into discussions in the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. When they opposed him and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, your blood be on your heads. I am clear of responsibility. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So he left there and went to a house belonging to a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next to synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord, along with his entire household and many of the Corinthians who heard, believed, and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won the victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made known his salvation. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song. Sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Alleluia. says the Lord, I will come back to you, and your hearts will rejoice. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. All the gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while later, and you will see me. So some of the disciples said to one another, What does this mean that he is saying to us, A little while, and you will not see me and again, a little while, and you will not, and you will see me? And because I am going to the Father. So they said, What is this little while of which he speaks? We do not know what he means. 
Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, and so he said to them, Are you discussing one another what I said? A little while and will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me. Amen, amen, I say to you, you will keep, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lately on my Facebook, uh, for some reason, pops up these riddles. I don't know anybody else, but these riddles that you're supposed to solve and make a comment on the solution of the riddle. Today's riddle is never answered. Right? A little while and you will see me. A little, and again, a little while here, you will see me. It's back and forth. I never understood John experience in today's gospel, but um, in this exchange, I think he's challenging or he's offering an opportunity to remind them what's coming to be. That he is going to be here for a while, but I'm coming back. I made a full pause this morning or a misspeak or whatever uh, about the assumption and ascension. The difference is a lot. Um, the ascension, Jesus did it upon himself. He was able to ascend by himself. The assumption, Mary needed some help, right? So it's not the same, that's why they're named different. The assumption that God raised Mary up, Jesus did it upon himself. So just, uh, that wasn't why I said that to point out difference. But, um, in today's Acts of the Apostles, we continue this journey of conversion, this journey of um, proclamation of the gospel. A lot of names were mentioned in today's uh, first reading. This opportunity for Paul to make his journey um, and share the good news. It seems like people, once they heard it, they believed and were baptized. It was almost like immediate. It seems like it's a little bit harder work today uh, to convince people of what God is saying is true. Uh, even for people who profess to be Christian and Catholic, uh, it's difficult at times to get people to understand what God is saying is true. We're quickly ending our uh, experience of Easter season. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension, which we celebrate has moved to Sunday for most of the dioceses in the United States. And then the following week is the Feast of Pentecost, right? And uh, that we, uh, we wrap up the Easter season. What has happened? You know, it seems like, for me, just not too long ago, we celebrated Ash Wednesday. And then, oh, actually, right before that, we celebrated Christmas, it seems like six weeks later, we were celebrating Ash Wednesday. And then Easter comes, and now Easter season's wrapping up. What happened? What happened for us in the Lenten and Easter journey? Are we like Paul? Are we out proclaiming the good news? Are we out sharing what God has offered to us in our faith? Or not? <clears throat> Paul yesterday was in Athens. Right? He was in, uh, at the Areopagus and he was uh, looking at all the altars. And uh, they even had the altar to the unknown God, just in case they missed any other gods. And he said, no, that's, that, the unknown God is Christ himself. Is God himself. And that's the God you are called to follow. And let me tell you about him. And so he continues that journey of proclamation. You know, this guy who was once the persecutor of the Jews is now the promoter of Christianity. The greatest promoter probably you've ever experienced in Christian history. This guy who converted. The guy who came to realize who Christ truly was in his life. He couldn't wait to tell everyone about it. And he did. Are we as much on fire with the Holy Spirit that we will celebrate in a couple of weeks, or 10 days? Are we on fire with him? Or is our fire simply a uh, smoldering wick at times that just seems to kind of, it's there, it's warm, but it's not doing much of anything? Where are we? and our willingness to share what God has offered to us and continues to offer to us. 
Are we allowing him to speak through our lives and our words and our actions? The church grew because of people just like Paul that went out and shared what they had experienced. They were willing to sacrifice for their faith and for one another. How they took care of each other. How they loved one another. That's how the church grew. One by one, moment by moment, action by action, word by word. The church continues to need to, it needs to continue to grow. It needs to be a force in the world in which we live that helps bring people closer to God. Because it seems that we're going the other way. It seems that we're moving in the wrong direction as far as activity and faith in the world in which we live. We need to be instruments of God's presence by how we live and share the good news that Christ has offered to us. Amen. Mindful of God's great mercy, and trust our prayers to Him. For our Holy Father and all the bishops, may the Holy Spirit continue guiding them and sanctifying and teaching the faithful with great love and mercy. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may the Lord guide them toward a path of peace for all people. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are alone or in need of unity, Lord, be their refuge and comfort, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have recently been received into the church, may the graces of the Easter sacraments continue to strengthen them in their journey of faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those who have no one else to pray for them, may they behold the face of God and live, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those affected by the storms this past week, we reach out to them for <coughs> responses to their needs. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers offered in our hearts. For the repose of the soul of Joshua Thomas Brown, when this Mass is being offered. For the prayers spoken both aloud and in our hearts, we have them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through this we have this bread wall for which earth is given. Human hands have made it become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord. God of all creation, through we have this wine to all fruit of the vine, and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice in yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to be right and just our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For the old order destroyed, the universe cast down, is, is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, come with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your spirit upon them like the dew, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of it, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the child of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Archbishop, his assisted bishops, the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so we pray in the words our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we'll always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer another sign of peace. Amen. Lamb of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be under my roof.
Amen. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our heart the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pass us in a week of peace. Thank you, God. And the sun came out. Thank <laughs> you.